Hey YouTube, this is my second attempt at a solar shower and it's much better than my first attempt which was a disaster and I'm making this video because I think it might be really interesting to anybody who has an off-road rig who's thinking about building their own shower because it's a little bit different um, a little bit different now if you are going to build a DIY shower stay till the end because I'm gonna tell you something that most showers do really badly and it's actually really dangerous and could kill you uh, so if you don't want to die stay until the end and I'll go through something about safety but now on um, here's here's what happened I created a shorter six inch pipe system because I wanted to put it in the basket on my roof rack and it was a disaster six inch pipe is really heavy really big it was 30 pounds empty um, and then I discovered that the tea that I had added that cost $30 for a plastic tea, the tea I had added, I could not get that damn thing to seal. And I realized I could jump through a whole bunch of hoops and get it to seal as I tested it um, so that it was airtight, but the chances of it being constantly, universally reliable were zero. The chances of me filling up charging up the pipe like everybody does through a Schrader valve, getting to a campsite and it's still having air in it was kind of a crapshoot. So I decided, okay, let's think about the water system and the air system pressurization as two different systems. And then everything started to really make sense. The second thing I decided was no tea. This is a pipe, 10 foot pipe, two end caps, a hole for the spigot at one end and this hole here for various things at the other uh, and I'm making this video now it's kind of all just kind of bail wired together but I'm making this video now before I paint it and mount it just because it's easier to demonstrate but I realized I don't need to put a Schrader valve in in the pipe I don't need to charge the pipe up because that's crazy and efficient anyway like if I put 30 psi in the pipe I'm gonna get a really hard jet of water for a while then I'm gonna get 20 psi then 10 then nothing then I'm gonna to have to charge it up again and that's gonna happen three two three four times until I run out of water and that's just sucks so I thought why don't I have an external air source regulate it to whatever I want um, and it just it just makes sense the pipes full of water and you add you add compressed a, a compressed air tank and you regulate um, into the tank. And that's super interesting to off-roaders. Why? Because you have a 25 gallon air tank and you're carrying a little compressor that's battery operated to recharge it if you need to. Um, so just attach that that's hanging off the back of your Jeep through a regulator to your solar shower. Duh! I, like it, it seems so obvious now to me anyway. Uh, personally, I always carry this little trailer tire around with me um, because when I camp, I have a little utility trailer that has a, a galley and carries my motorcycle. So this little tire is, is enough and a little bit more um, at 60 PSI to work with this seven gallon tank. So here's how it works. Um, Let's fill it. So, air is off. That is open to breathe. Attach your hose. It might be full, actually. Um, open that valve. Open the water. And fill it up until it comes out the top. So that's why this breather is here. That wasn't there. If that wasn't air there, the water would get trapped and you couldn't fill it. So now I'm closing that off and I'm switching on the air. And this is currently regulated to about. Completely turn that tap off. 
That's regulated to about 16, 17 PSI. Um, I ordered a 60 PSI gauge and they sent me a 160, so that kind of sucks. But um, the elements of this are down on the tire, I've got, it's called a brass chuck. Attaches to the tire, converts to quarter inch NPT. Then this nice kind of easy fit um, press fit valve, press fit quarter the quarter inch MPTs with this stuff that I bought poly not nylon because it's really flexible it bends really nicely and doesn't kink regulator so no matter what goes in here you get what you want out of there um, this is important this is a check valve so water cannot come back through the regulator to the tire I've got a valve here to turn air on and off. It should actually be here and will be in the final build. Uh, I've got the breather and that's it. Super simple. Um, all this stuff, that's the most expensive. I bought a nice one. It was 30 bucks. You can get them for as little as 10. Um, but I bought a nice one. So, I mean, when you look at brass, every bit of brass is about five bucks. Um, I put a Schrader valve in here because for me personally, I'm going to have this mounted on the side of my Vanagon and I'm going to have the little spare up in the luggage rack. Um, so I, if I have the Schrader valve down here and this mounted where I can access it, um, I don't ever have to touch the tire. It's just nice. So how does it work? Let's do a little test. Let's do, let's even turn it down to 10 and let some pressure off so it's actually 10. No, well, no, that's the pressure off. It's just gonna lose water. And down here is just a little spigot. Normal, with a quick release. And I can, I've been testing it with this fairly generic hose that has different settings. Um, at 10 PSI, I get 25 minutes solid on mist, which is, just blows my mind. 25 minutes. Of absolute constant water which makes me want to put some kind of misters around my awning that would hardly use any water at all but would give a really fine mist um, but for showering let's make sure that's it's kind of hard to see um, 15 psi is almost too much that would go through water pretty quickly. Um, but if you were standing under that, that would give you a shot really well. That's, it's called center on this. I think if you were standing under that, it would be like you were in a bad Airbnb. I mean, it's, it's really hard to tell. But if you were standing under that, that would definitely be enough to get wet and to use soap. Um, <clears throat> and then there's one called flat, which would be really good to get rid of soap. And that flat setting, in fact, this is what, about 15 PSI. This, I can get eight minutes solid with that setting, with this uh, 10 to 15 PSI. And 10 PSI is actually ideal. Let's turn this down. Oh, that is, that's about eight. Let's just for fun turn it way up. Which starts to bring us to the safety part of this and what to do to not kill you. I'm now putting 30 PSI into this. Like, that is serious and would be a complete waste of water but that mist at 30 psi is so nice like that is so nice like that would really cool you down it's really hard to get an idea of how awesome that is that is a very wasteful use of camp shower let's go back to the but look at that the nice thing is it's constant it's like it's not going to 
you know what you're getting. I'm going to turn it down to 10 PSI and talk about safety because I've watched a lot of these videos and people are not being safe. Um, it is simply not true that you can walk into your local hardware store and get pipe that you can put any pressure in whatsoever. Um, this is a piece of pipe from Lowe's or Home Depot. This is all they have in Lowe's and Home Depot. It is Schedule 40. And people think that because it's Schedule 40, it can take pressure. It cannot. Look, non-pressure. As opposed to 220 PSI that I had this special order. And they are exactly the same pipe and they take the same fittings but even the fittings in Home Depot and Lowe's are not pressure fittings. Schedule 40 means it's that thick. These are both the same thickness. This is dangerous. Um, it is rated for 30 feet of standing water so if you had that in a building and it was like a drain pipe um, and the sewer backed up this is rated that it would hold at the bottom, it wouldn't split with 30 feet of standing headwater. That's about 5 PSI. To take a pipe that is rated for 5 PSI, paint it black, stick it in the sun, and fill it up to 30 PSI is really, really dangerous. Um, PVC does not split, it shatters. So if you are standing onto that, or if, or more likely, if you are filling that up at a Schrader valve at one end and that cap breaks when you get to 30 PSI, that's like super dangerous. The other people thing people do is they think, well, if I'm going to paint it black, why don't I just use black ABS pipe from um, Lowe's or Home Depot that is also scheduled for 40, but uh, ABS pipe is not meant for sunshine. Uh, it's meant to be buried or be inside. Ultraviolet rays take you, um, ultraviolet makes ABS brittle. So I don't even know what the pressure rating is because um, I didn't need to check because there's no way I'm taking a bit of black ABS pipe and putting it in the sun and then putting any kind of pressure through it because it also explodes um, and is brittle and shatters so it's not like so my battery died while I was talking about safety or something but um, bottom line ABS black ABS no it, in the Sun um, it soaks up the rays it becomes brittle it explodes um, don't don't think just because something is says it's schedule 20 schedule 40 that it takes pressure this is a no pressure schedule 40 pipe from Lowe's. This is a pressurized schedule 40 pipe that says 220 PSI on it and it's hard to find. So where can you find it? Uh, if you have a plumbing supply local to you, they will definitely have it. Um, <clears throat> although around here, I'm in Denver and I th I've been told that the plumbing supplies are now kind of only open to, to tradesmen and not the general public which is a bit of a problem. So um, I got these at Ace Hardware. I special ordered them and they came in in a few days to my local and I went and picked them up. That was great. So 20 bucks for the pipe, nine, nine, almost 10 for the end caps. Um, overall price, it's around 150 bucks. If you look at what is actually here, but a hell of a lot more because of the experimentation I've done and the mistakes I've made along the way. For fittings, like this what I did was so this is a half inch thread I decided I didn't want to glue a spigot in I wanted to be able to I basically wanted to create a threaded insert instead of creating like a hard hard lining something so I got these it's a half inch to three I think it's half inch to three eighths basically it's a bushing it's intended to go and be glued in like that to something um, I'm a metric guy Closest I could find 27 millimeters was too big. 26 millimeters is a little small, so I, I drilled 26 millimeter holes, then I filed them out a tiny bit, then 
glued that into the hole, then glued a piece of this into what was exposed inside just to, to have as much glued surface as possible. Now if that was on this one, if you look inside you'll see that, but I've carved out a hole and a channel here so that the water is, is able to get in the bottom. Because if, if, if I did that, then I'd be like an inch off the bottom for water supply. Uh, and that's about it. Um, um, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you have any questions, comments, happy to help. I uh, hope you like it. Um, I'd love to see other people do this. It would be kind of fun to make this a thing. Because, honestly, it's just a joy. Just, just that constant turn it on. You know what you expect and you know how long it's going to last. It's just a joy compared to having to completely recharge and be safe. Safety first. Get the right stuff. Okay? Thanks. Bye.